so students this is a class for ba part first we will be reading one more literary term and this is the last of the series conceit i am dr anil dadich your english teacher what is conceit conceit is actually a figure of speech in which two vastly different objects are likened together they are joined together they are compared together you can say with the help of similes or metaphors you all know what simile is what metaphor is they are comparative tools in literature conceit develops a comparison basically it develops a comparison which is exceedingly unlikely but it is nonetheless intellectually imaginative comparison hai but intellectually unlikely hai but intellectually imaginative hone ke karan it becomes very interesting a comparison turns into a conceit kab when the writer tries to make us admit a similarity between two things of whose unlikeness we are strongly conscious we are conscious of the two things which are not similar but still the writer makes us admit a similarity means it is on the part of the writer that he tries us to admit that he he that that there is a similarity between two dissimilar things actually he tries to make us realize that this similarity between two dissimilar things uh, can be seen for this reason conceits are often surprising actually they surprise us by their uh, unlikely comparison for example it will not surprise us to hear someone saying you are a snail or you are as low as a snail as we understand that the similarity is drawn on a common quality of slowness snail ek samudra ke kinare jantu hota hai jo it walks it moves very slow so it's a comparative you can say statement uh, to denote that you are very slow however we will definitely be surprised to hear someone comparing two lovers with the legs of a draftsman's compass see lovers ko aap compare kar rahe ho kis se draftsman ke compass se compass kisko kehte hain jo maths mein gola banane ke liye draw karne ke liye jo hota hai that is compass jiske two legs hote hain thus conceit examples have a surprising or shocking effect on the readers because they are novel comparisons new kind of comparisons unlike the conventional comparisons made in similes and metaphors the term conceit usually brings to mind certain examples from metaphysical poets of 17th century actually these metaphysical poets used conceits to to a great extent and among them john dun stands out as the best exponent of the use of metaphysical conceits john dun in his poem a valediction forbidding morning this is the title of his poem he says if they be two they kiske liye use kiya gaya hai compass ke liye use kiya gaya hai if they are two they are two as stiff twin compasses are two दे दे किसके लिए यूज किया गया है लवर्स के कंपैरिजन के लिए ट्विन कंपासिस ट्विन कंपासिस उसमें देर आर टू लेग्स बट स्टिल दे आर वन इन द सेम मैनर लवर्स आर टू बट दे आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी वन दाई सोल दाई मीन्स योर योर सोल मे बी द फिक्स्ड फुट मेक्स नो शो टू मूव कंपस में क्या होता है वन फुट इज फिक्सड इन द मिडल इट डज नॉट सीम टू मूव बट इट डथ इफ द अदर डज लेकिन दूसरा मूव करता है तो कहीं ना कहीं उसमें मूवमेंट है ऑल दो इट इज ऑन वन स्टैंड एंड दो इट इज इन द सेंटर दो इट इन द सेंटर सिट येट वेन द अदर फार डथ रोम रोम इंस वांडर जब दूसरा फुट 
दूर तक घूमने जाता है इट लीन्स तो जो सेकेंड फुट है इट ऑल्सो लीन्स एंड हार्कन्स आफ्टर इट इट मूव आफ्टर इट ग्रोज इरेक्ट एज दैट कम्स होम और दूसरा जैसे ही पास आता है इट ग्रोज इरेक्ट इरेक्ट में सीधा हो जाता है दे बोथ मिंगल मिक्स दिस इज वन ऑफ डन्स मोस्ट इंजीनियस कंसीड्स ही कंपेयर्स हिज एंड इज बिलवेड सोल विद टू लेग्स ऑफ ए ड्राफ्टिंग कंपस ही कंपेयर्स हर सोल टू द फिक्स फुट एंड हिज टू द अदर फुट He says that the bodies of the lovers may be separate, like the two legs of a compass, but they are always joined at the top. That reminds us of the spiritual union of the two lovers. In the poem "Go and Catch a Falling Star," John Donne has made use of conceit. He gives a long list of improbable or impossible things and then compares them. with a far fetched image that all the impossible things may become possible one day but a beautiful lady cannot be faithful although there is the, the comparison very dissimilar or unlikely but still john dun has tried to make this compatible now we will talk about the function of conceit what is the function of conceit in literature because conceits make unusual or unlikely comparisons between two things they allow readers to look at things in a new way similes and metaphors may explain things vibrantly but they tend to become boring at times because of their predictable nature they are very predictable aapko pehle se pata chal jata hai ki ye comparison isliye aise aise hai so they are known things similes and metaphors are mostly Known things are predictable. Conceits, on the other hand, surprise. They shock readers by making or far-fetched comparisons. These comparisons are far-fetched. बहुत दूर की कोड़ी लाते हैं अपने comparisons में to use conceits. Hence, conceit is used as a tool in literature to develop interest in the readers. That is the thing. Okay. Thank you very much.